Hello and welcome to this week's Goals Eye View. It's all different, all changed this week. Uh, Swanee's not here this week, he's up in Leicester, uh, and Chris is unfortunately working. But I am bo- I'm joined by Dom this week. Good evening, Dom. Well, that's the main two, isn't it? That's that. That's the best thing, isn't it? That, yeah, that's yeah. how we get, r- get rid of those other two. They've been, they've been in the way long, long enough, haven't they? Yeah? Let's push on Absolutely. without them. Welcome. Let's <laughs> do it. Uh, this episode is sponsored by Galaxy TQ. And we're here to discuss our pathetic defeat at Hampton and Richmond Borough on the weekend. Dom, you weren't there. Lucky for you. Mm. I was. Um, I'll try not to go into a rant as Swanee did last week, as I did last week. But once again, unfortunately, it was the same old talk of United we've come to expect in recent weeks. Uh, we started OK for the first 20 minutes, I'd say, in that game. Didn't really create too many clear-cut chances but I felt we had more of the ball we were passing it around okay and then in true talk United style we get cut apart at the back and a poor own goal by Brett McGavin who's not marking anyone that was the one thing I took from the, the highlights uh after I watched it back he's not marking anyone and he's ended up putting the ball in his own net ball watching going on for that goal wasn't there nobody seemed to move all he, all he did was so give and go, you pass it back to me, I'll get around the back, pass it over. Yeah, yeah, nobody made the move yeah. to stop it. It's, just, oh, it's frustrating defending, isn't it? After you've been on the front foot for 20 odd minutes like we had, just to, mm-hmm. there you go, one attack, one goal. And then and sadly, we never really looked like getting back into that game. Hampton took complete control. Uh, the penalty, um, Ross Marshall doesn't think it was a penalty at the time, I felt like it was just because his man got goal side and he dragged him down for the penalty. And you go in 2 0 down at half time, the booze are ringing out from the talky fans. And the one thing I would take away from Hampton as well was the fact that I think for the first time this season, I don't think there was anyone there supportive of Gary. It was very much a Gary out crowd. And they, that you know, we were very vocal in. Gary out chance at various points of the game and time to go Gary and you know the second half we we pushed and pushed and people will say we played better in the second half but when you're 2-0 down you know you've given the impetus to the home side and you know they were f- relatively comfortable Brad Ash I don't know what's happened to him but he's just turned he just can't score mm-hmm. he's left his shooting boots at home it's just it's so sad to watch because I know there's a really good player there and I think we all agree that he will come good eventually. But at the minute, he's really struggling. Without that Jarvis threat as well, which we'll go on to in a little bit, It's we just look toothless up front. And then to the third goal in injury time, just kind of summed it all up. Route one ball, Tomlinson gets absolutely turned and lobbed over, love it into the back of the net. And, you know, we get a consolation at the end. But what's the, you know, it's too little too late by then. You, you've lost the game and... Yeah. You know, Gary was quick to skittle down to the tunnel and an altercation with Rosh Marshall and a couple of fans. Uh, one of my mates, Mark's, had some words for him and he said some words back. And it's all just a mess, isn't it, Dom? It's just bad vibes all around at the moment, isn't it? Um, just a toxic kind of atmosphere. It's everything we didn't want from the start of the season, did we? We thought we'd start well for the season. You think, right, OK, we'll definitely be up there, no problem. We find ourselves in temp. Oh, we don't after that, mate. Um, yesterday's mm-hmm. results, I think. Um, so it's it's a bit of a nightmare. We started better, didn't we? At least you think, right? Okay, we're on the front foot, but you got to score the first goal, then, don't you? Yeah, because, absolutely. And um, it's because again, we just what it... we just always concede at the moment, don't we? I mean, what we got two or three clean sheets all season, two in the league, I think. Um, so you just know enough, when they it? when when they the other team goes forward, we're just liable to concede one. Um, Holsteads look wobbly as well the last few games. Um, that looked nasty. He, he, nasty yeah. injuries picked up as well. He, he looked like he didn't know where he was and probably lucky him in a way. Um, yeah. Um, and then to lose that first goal was bad enough, but the second one, I don't know if refs are keeping an eye on Ross, Ross Marshall in the last few weeks because that is three penalties now, isn't it? Um, Whether you think they're soft or not when you've conceded three and four, they're, they're 
it's not good enough for us. And you're getting you on you the need wrong to... side. That's the trouble. Yeah. You you put yourself in the in a problem area, haven't you? If you do the right things, the guy wasn't that fast, was he? Really like that? He just he just he was just ahead of them in the right area. And um, yeah, it was a soft penalty to be honest. But um, that's just the way things are going at the moment for us, isn't it? Absolutely. When you're, when, you, when you're playing well and you you know you you make your own luck. Then you don't concede those sort of goals, do you? And um, yeah, two 0 It's just oh, I could, I could feel the atmosphere from home. I was just on the radio, and yeah, Dummy it, it was, was. Dummy was trying to look at the positives. You know, we're pushing. We're a bit unlucky here. We 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 could come back into it if we get one. We'll get a second. And he, he kept on trying to push that rhetoric or half, but yeah, it didn't come in the end. It, it comes to a point now where you know what did Gary say in his weekly press brief? I mean, I I. Listen to the first question switched off. Mm. Um, you know, disappointing result, but at least we played well in the second half. Well, I'm sorry, but getting a good performances in the second half is not going to win you football matches when you've gifted the first half away. Yeah. And the rhetoric from this football club is just, it's just shambolic. We want to um, see anger, don't we? I mean, at least God, I, I don't like Ross Marshall. Where's the pride gone? That's what I want. Yeah. You know, you look at Exeter last night. I mean, they took Middlesbrough all the way in there. League yeah. Cup game. I mean, they could have been in the quarterfinals last night, but they gave it all, you know, a really good go. And what we're doing, we're losing to Western Supermare, Hampton, Richmond, Borough. You know, we've got two tough games coming up. It's just embarrassing. The the lack yeah, of it's the city fans are going about losing any games in League One. I mean, they're really disappointed. I mean, look at our level. The, we don't feel any anger or disappointment really at the club. We just feel a bit of like, oh, oh dear. It's not our fault, really. We'll do better next week. It just feels like the same kind of excuses each week, and nobody's learning. And I think nobody seems to be getting you know, too wound up about it. They just it's a little bit of bleak acceptance at the moment. It, it feels it just feels sad, doesn't it? We don't like grumbling week after week about it either, do we? It's become it's a football yeah. club that's dying, is what I said last yeah. week, and that's what it felt like. Yeah. Um, you know, I've got. You know, my links with Hampton, my mates there and the volunteering I've done there in the past. And I just the whole day I was dreading it because I just knew we weren't going to come out with a victory. It, 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 you know, they're a part. OK, they're a hybrid team now, what that, so they say. And, you know, they've they've picked up in recent weeks. They've won, you know, four on the bounce before they played us. But honestly, the, the aspirations of this football club, we, you know, we want to get promoted first time of asking. But I mean, we're now 10th. We're tenth. Mm-hmm. Dartford won what four one against Western on Tuesday night. It's not a good league. The standard of this league no, is not very good. No, I mean it's competitive league, but the standard isn't high. Um, to be down tenth in this league is it is embarrassing, isn't it? I all due respect to these teams because they're all fighting hard, aren't they? They're all beating each other. Only Yeovil are showing any consistency. Um, they seem to have found their, you know, their way of playing. They found a confidence and they built a squad to to last as well. We built a sort of team and then we did build a squad to to go yeah. with it, didn't we? So just look at our bench is what I'll say. Once again our bench on Saturday. How on earth are you going to change football matches when you've got the likes of no disrespect but Ryan Hansen and Dylan Crow on your bench? It's just not going to happen. Callan Dolan looked decent on the highlights. He looked like he wanted to get the ball and shoot he it. was <laughs> Definitely the best player on that pitch. Now, I yeah. don't know whether that's just because the standard that we've got in our squad currently is that low. Yeah. Um, however, he was putting himself about and, you know, from his social media, um, you know, he seems up for the fight, which is good. It's nice to see Any, a bit of passion anybody on the pitch. Of, anybody with a bit of swagger and confidence can walk into this talky dressing room and be the best player at the moment, can't they? Because confidence is low. You, if, you have, if you've got a bit of something about you, like he clearly has, then you could this is an opportunity for him isn't it to prove something and um, I can see him scoring goals because he had a few pops didn't he and he knows where clearly knows yeah. how to hit the target so that was the only bright spark I could take for the day it's, it was thoroughly, thoroughly depressing wasn't it especially for you it was yeah um, don't get me wrong Hampton deserved the win I'll put it out yeah. there now you know fair enough they were the better team on the day and you know on another day the you know, at 2-0, we had an opportunity where the ball apparently crossed the line. It was very hard to see from where I was, but... Yeah, and, the camera, you know, I, I think, is... I think the camera's masked on the highlights by one of the defenders. You can't quite see the angle, um, so I, I couldn't tell, to be honest. 
and you've got Paul Buster. That was the I think that was the most uh, entertaining bit of the game. I've seen Paul Bastard actually take his hat off and run from behind the goal over to the linesman to give him uh, give them some grief. That's he quite loves funny, it, doesn't he? Yeah, bless yeah. him, bless him, absolute you know proper legend in the fan base, Paul Bastard. But um, yeah. yeah, it's just sad all round, isn't it? And you know we must have had you know they said the crowd was just under fifteen hundred, which. You know, I'm not buying that for a second. I, I don't think there was that many there, but we definitely had about 300, 350, I'd say. It was unsegregated in the end, so it was hard yeah. to kind of judge. But, you know, the loyal talky fan base once again. People keep Gary turning Johnson's... up, mate. We keep turning up, but they've it's... got to match our commitment and they can't keep on counting to these numbers forever. I was looking back at the Gary o- Hours era yeah. and he had about 1,400 by the time he left. Um, 1400 at play. Well, obviously, we'll get better for the next two games because they're big ones. But, you know, if you lose those or only get one point, then it starts to drop perhaps to that kind of levels. Um, because even the diehard Gary Johnson supporters think, well, this is ridiculous now. You know, you, something needs to be done and um, it's not. And do they it's, do they care to make it worth me going? That's the thing. As, as, a, a, as a football club, you have to show you care, don't you? And show you care about playing football, so you care about supporters, because you can't just count on their blind loyalty forever, can you? No, absolutely. Yeah. What I must say um, was very telling was how quickly Gary Johnson left the ground after full time. Um, normally, you know, they do the uh, post-match interviews at the ground. It looked like they did it at a McDonald's service station somewhere. Yeah. Um, and he just, he, he just looked completely defeated. I mean, I kind of moved to the tunnel area towards the end of the game um to have my say and i did have my say not that he listened to any of it um but he just looks completely defeated and he's just run out of ideas for me and it's, it's like just embarrassing season, he didn't have the fire in his, his post-match interviews look at his interviews from the last time we were in the south to now yeah he's yeah, a completely a couple different years ago, person he had, now he had fire didn't he he was you know rollicking these players like they're not good enough some of these i'm going you know yeah he was snarling wasn't he and you said right I'm not sure that's, you know, the best way of treat them, but heck, they're going to get hell in the dressing room if they don't deliver. I, um, he I set, actually... He set um, standards, didn't he, in the first few mm. years? He set standards and people had to get to them. Otherwise, you're going out the door. But these these guys, you know, it's just I just don't see that. I just don't see that anymore, unfortunately. I did track down uh, Aaron Downs before the game and fair play, he had a chat. And, you know, I said to him, I shook his hand and I said... You know, thank you, Aaron, for what you said on Tuesday and actually coming out and appreciating the support. But with all due respect, mate, it shouldn't be you that's having to make, you know, having to do that. It should be the manager. And, you know, he gave the usual rhetoric, you know, we're all, you know, we know we're letting the fans down and we're all behind, you know, there's a good team there. But I'm just not seeing it, Dom. And it's with the next two games, you know, Bar from... Yeovil, I mean, Christ, they're probably two of the hardest games at this division at the minute. Granted, Bath lost, I think, the other week, but still, they're going to have a big turnout if it goes ahead with the weather. I don't, maybe yeah, it's we'll home it will do as well. <laughs> and then you've got Yeovil, who just, I mean, they could be 16 points clear of us mm. or whatever. No, what are they at the minute? Are they, yeah, it, it doesn't really matter, yeah. does it? It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't really matter, does it? I don't think we'll be catching them now. Mm. Um, and then I guess we'll go on to Jarvis, the injury, you know, our worst fears that he's going to be out. It, the club did said it was good news. Did we miss him on Saturday, do you think, or did it, I think did so. it make a big difference? I think if you have an Aaron Jarvis in that squad, I think we would have scored at least one in normal time. Yeah. Um, I mean, I didn't think he was all that productive against Western, but the way he, he made that goal on against Western... That one ball he flicked up in the air and they managed to get under control yeah. and turn. I mean, he's head and shoulders the best player we've got at the minute. And I yeah. mean, now he's out till Christmas. I mean, he's been replaced and we'll go on to that in a second. But I, it's just tough boots to fill. I think the um, only thing I'd say about him is that you've got him up there and maybe you rely on him too much. Um, the balls all go up to him. So you kind of like think, right, if in doubt, give it to Jarvis, he'll he'll sort it out he'll do something so maybe maybe it's a chance to for the players to take responsibility maybe a chance for us to step out the shadows a little bit and maybe we'll, we'll maybe we'll play a little bit more to his strengths as a player Ash rather than Jarvis and I don't know I mean at Weymouth he, he would have been the main man wouldn't he? so he'll be the main man up front 
in these next two games, and he's got a lot to do, hasn't he? I just feel like he's at the moment. He just feels like he's just not he's trying too run. hard. Yeah, he's just not timing things. He's thinking too hard about it. He's not letting a natural kind of movement. He, he's just he's always too late for things or too early. It's, it just seems to be a timing as much as a technique issue. I just yeah, I just I just I'm just not sure what it is. But I do think he'll he will come good. But we need him to need him to Step do the business up. now, don't we? Yeah, we can't be waiting until like December or you know something like that. He, he needs to score goals this month. Um, and I think another on. problem, for, another problem for me is Stobbs and Collins this season. On mm-hmm. paper, they should be some of the best players in this division, and I just don't think they're performing at the moment. Especially Collins. I thought he had another really poor game on Saturday. Um, you know, we were crossing balls into the box, but getting very little out of it. And that's got to have an effect on the strike force as well. I think, again, taking responsibility of Collins, he seems to skirt around the game, doesn't he? If you want to show us you're a proper player, you got you got to do it for yourself, mate. You know, get in the box, create havoc. Um, I don't know whether he's worrying too much about what could go wrong. He, he seems to be sort of too far away to influence things he's not committed enough perhaps I mean some of the he's just a bit pit patty with challenges isn't he he's not the toughest mm. I just just oh yeah I just need to see him get stuck in a little bit more believe in himself because he's come from Newport is not he and you'd expect I mean he should score 10 goals in this league surely without blinking I thought yeah absolutely I've seen him score a few last year didn't we for us well, one outside the area one nearby yeah. Yeah, I expected so much for him. I don't know if it's um, you know, it's something to do with the tactics, Gary Johnson, how he's well, playing him, but but the players have got to take responsibility for themselves as well. I didn't even understand what tactics we were playing for large portions on Saturday. It was so hard to read. Was it a three five two? Was it a four five one, four four two? Yeah. I, it just looked like we had nothing and you could hear on had... the radio because they were saying one thing and then somebody I message said a different thing and it just seemed uncertain and we've gone into that territory of not knowing what our best formation is and just jiggling things around hoping for the best and mm. yeah well yeah. i will say yellow army don't get on ash's back he is going to do it eventually because there was quite a few murmurings on saturday mm. you know oh ash you're not very good this and the other he he's not the problem yes he, okay he's missing sitters at the moment that is a problem, but he's not the main problem. He is going to score goals in this league. I'm confident of that. Um, but, you know, it, it was just the support was great up until I would say the second goal went in and then it started to turn on Gary. And yeah. I mean, I'm not going to, you know, I was right there chanting away myself as well. And especially at the end of the game, I don't know, Roche Marcel, I, you know, Gary's mentioned about players coming in, going out, bring players in. I mean, how many more opportunities are you going to give players like Ross Marshall? I there just... is Ollie Tomlinson needs and Ross Marshall type next to him, an aggressive big centre back, but they also need somebody who will make the right decisions. Mm. They, they can't be like giving silly penalties and making rush challenges. It's got to be somebody who can mm. help Ollie, but you know, and be a calm presence and also, you know, make sure they make the right decisions at the back. Yeah. We got Dean Moxie back there, of course, as well, but I'm not sure he's a leader at the back as he gets on with things and leads by example. But you think he would be? You think he'd be a natural leader back there? I just don't think he's a shouter. I don't think he's that kind of player, really. He tries to lead by example. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's doing his bit, isn't he? But he's also looking very tired. And, yeah, it's just the failure to freshen up this whole squad is just looking. Well, we're going to enter a very yeah, busy November. You know, we're going to enter a very busy November. We're coming yeah. up to Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. Alstead, we don't know how long he's going to be out for. Hopefully, it's just a precautionary thing. Uh, maybe he'll miss Saturday, but be in for Tuesday. Um, We've got this new so. guy in Williams, haven't we? And there's also, I think, Will Jenkins might not be far off because he posted on Instagram a picture of him in a talkie shirt the other day, I think. So whether he might return. I've heard De Silva's not far off. So maybe that yeah. will give us something, whether these players will perform. But Jenkins was... He was con- good, yeah, it? yeah. It was a shame, wasn't it, when he left injury? Um, that's under the assumption that Plymouth will give him back to us. I suppose, I'd like to think yeah. they would. 
Yeah, I, I, I assume they would. So, so maybe there'll be some reinforcements. He's still looking for for another striker as well, isn't he? So. It was just the whole day at Hampton there, you know, they got right into the Halloween vibe. I mean, the owners were in fate, you know, face paint and all that. And it was just like they were trying to make it fun and make it enjoyable kind of day for the fans. And yeah, that makes a difference. We've seen that a few times this season where Mm. these, these non league South teams are trying to make the best of it and make it an occasion for people. What was interesting for me was, I think it's the first ground I've ever been to where they've not put any of the advertising hoardings up. Oh, really? Yeah, there was literally nothing, like maybe one, but no Vanarama boards or... <laughs> Surely they get fined for that. Like, I mean, yeah. we're in November, for Christ's sake. I mean, come on. <laughs> National League, if you're watching this, give Hampton a points deduction, please. For the love of God, give them a points well, deduction until they get the board. Jeez, that is just desperate, mate. That's how... That's as far as we've sunk at the minute, I'm afraid. I mean, considering you went to the Western game as well, that's a hell of a week of football you experienced, wasn't it? So... And I plan I to hope be for you. I hope you've got an electric be... oven rather than a gas oven at home. That's the main thing, have you? Uh, I've got an air fryer, <laughs> mate. That's all I've got now. <laughs> Not allowed to use the oven. You've put your um, head in that. <laughs> oh, God. Um, I think that's all for part one, really. I, unless there's anything else you can think of. It's all kind of. We're going to go delve into the ownership a little bit, aren't we? Because George was mm. there, as we all know. Yes, yes. We were going to mention this in part one, but. Uh, last minute changes so uh we'll dive out more into that into part two so thank you for watching everyone i hope i've done all right this first episode um yeah we'll see less, you in part ang- two. less angry than last week tom uh, you know but if i just get myself wound up i'm just gonna end up in an early grave aren't i so, you look after your blood pressure blood pressure mate i oh, know perfect blood pressure me no i'm good all good <laughs> so thank you for watching and we'll see you in part two Here's Hargreaves, the chance for Torquay! Chris Hargreaves, the captain! If he stays on side, Carlisle checks instead. He's looking for Bennett. Sell!